I V M. Hi, I'm Utsav, a behavior researcher by training and a slow traveler by passion. Postcards from Nowhere is a travel podcast where I condense a decade of travel experiences and explore not just the where but also the why and how to travel. My stories emerge from slow traveling the less explored parts of the world: Bosnia and Herzegovina, Armenia, Uzbekistan, and even China. At the end of each story, I give practical tips and new ideas about how to travel better. This week, in the 14th episode of the series Fabulous Foods, we attempt to solve the world's greatest unsolved culinary mystery that originated in India. We travel across the cold terrain of Siberia to the arid landscapes of Iran and peninsular India. and maybe discover the source of the soma these sages clothed by the wind wear dirty tatters following the rush of the wind they go where the gods have gone before exhilarated by ascetism we have risen into the winds our physical bodies are all you mere mortals can see he flies through the air seeing all the various forms below the sage has made himself a friend and associate to every god this is a verse from the ninth mandala of the rigved describing an elevated exalted state of mind that the sages were experiencing this was experienced after consuming a certain drink and by no means was this drink a mere footnote in the rigved there is an entire chapter with 114 hymns that have been dedicated to this drink alone During rituals it was offered to the gods and ingested by the priests and worshipers who then reported feelings of infusion vitalization empowerment elevation and even travel into other worlds or possession by the divine The drink was known as soma and was given the highest regard in the rigved Now the oldest part of the rigved was orally composed in northwestern India somewhere around Punjab between 1500 and 1200 BC while book 10 of the rigved was composed between 1200 and 900 BC more eastwards between the yamuna and the ganga but by 800 BC any mentions of soma simply disappeared from various references we know that the soma became increasingly difficult to obtain one prayer even apologizes to the gods for the use of a substitute so what made soma suddenly disappear Soma was supposed to come from a plant which is described as yellow with long stalks grew in the mountains and was collected by them the juice was extracted from its stalk by pressing it between two stones or pounding in a mortar the juice brown in color was filtered through lamb's wool and stored in jars or wooden tubs and before being drunk it was mixed with milk or yogurt the identification of the plant which was used to make soma is probably the world's greatest unsolved culinary riddle which plant present within our epoch could provide us with such elevated experiences that one could travel into other worlds or feel possessed by the divine this story takes us from the harsh winter lands of siberia to the arid landscapes of iran and peninsular india in 1709 a swedish officer and geographer philip johan wall stralenberg was captured by the victorious russian forces in the battle of poltava as a prisoner of war for 10 years he studied the geography of siberia and the anthropology languages and customs of its native tribes after returning to stockholm in 1730 he published his book north and eastern parts of europe in asia the book was well received and soon translated into english french and spanish his book extensively dealt with the languages and customs of the tatars uzbeks bashkirs kirgizs and mongols in writing about the shamanic rituals of the indigenous people of siberia he noted their use of fly agaric mushroom or amanita muscaria he records the recipe as to every 500 grams of mushrooms cut up into a medium size a liter of water slightly acidulated by two or three spoonfuls of vinegar should be used If only water alone can be obtained this must be renewed once or twice in this fluid the fungi are to be macerated for entire 2 hours after which 
they are to be washed in an abundance of water. Next, they are to be put into cold water and boiled for half an hour, after which they may be taken out, washed, dried and used as food. The eastern part of Siberia was isolated from the rest of Russia for millennia. In the early 19th century, when it began to be explored by travelers, a Stone Age culture that depended totally on reindeer for its economy was found. Their medicine men were known as shamans, and the religious rites were based significantly on the use of fly agaric mushroom, which they gathered from the local birch forests. The Korya tribe of Kamchatka was known for its consumption, and they built a thriving trade in the mushroom with many other communities around the Gulf of Persia. Meanwhile, in Persia, the legend of Zoroaster persists. He was an ancient Iranian prophet who founded what is now known as Zoroastrianism, or the religion followed by present-day Parsis of India. Here, the Hauma plant is a central element in the legend surrounding the conception of Zoroaster. In the story, his father, Aurushaspa, took a piece of the Hauma plant and mixed it with milk. He gave his wife Dugdova one half of the mixture and he consumed the other. They then conceived Zoroaster who was instilled with the spirit of the plant. The plant too, much like the origins of Soma, grows in the mountains and is described as golden yellow with stalks. In the late 19th century, the efforts to identify Soma intensified. An American ethnomycologist, R. Gordon Wasson, proposed that the fly agaric mushroom used by the Siberians is the Soma. Yet another group of researchers suggested that it is the Persian Hauma plant, known as Ephedera sinica, is the Soma. Indian historians have suggested that Cannabis satvia or hemp is the most likely candidate. Meanwhile, closer home in southern India, Somayaji, from the Smarta Brahmin community, consisting of the Tulu and Nambudri Brahmins, performed the Soma Yagya, a Yagya performed to be celestial entities to promote the well-being of all humanity. They used a plant named Somalata or Sarcostemma acidum, which is procured as a leafless one. This too is considered as a candidate, though it is not known to have the effects described in Rig Veda. Among the Brahmins of North India, the issue is actually irrelevant. In their conversation with Sir Monir Monir Williams, an Indian-born British Sanskrit scholar, they told him that, in consequence of the present sinful condition of the world, the holy plant had ceased to grow on terrestrial soil and was now only found in heaven. Even 200 years of research in Vedic literature, botany and anthropology has not settled the question. What exactly was so? And maybe we never will. The greatest unsolved culinary riddle shall remain so and maybe the charm is in not knowing. If you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IBM network. You can listen to us on the IBM podcast app or ibmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on our social media. We are at IBM Podcasts on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to reach out to me, I am Utsav Memory on Twitter and YV Travel 42 on Instagram. There's a quick survey to fill out on ivmpodcast.com slash survey. It lets us know a little bit more about who's listening to us. And you know what? We're going to do a few prizes. So, I mean, like, we'll do a random drawing of, like, maybe 10 people and we'll send you all some swag. Remember, that's ivmpodcast.com slash survey where you can fill out the survey. Hello, hello. It's been another great week here on the IVM Podcasts Network. On this round is on me, Gauri explores the power of networking with Abha Bakaya, founder and CEO of Ladies Who Lead. On Naan Kari, Sadaf and Archit go on a virtual food walk with Anubhav Sapra, founder of Delhi Food Walks. On Misconduct, Raghvi and Nisha tell us about the fascinating life story of China's only female empress, Wu Zetian. On The Longest Constitution, Priya analyzes the First Amendment to the Indian Constitution. And on Marathi Khidkitun, the Deshmukhs explore museums all around the world. We've got some exciting news for you. IVM Podcasts has just launched its merch and our first line is out now. Head to the IVM Podcasts website and click on the shop tab to check out our first collection of t-shirts. Do follow us on social media. We are IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. 
And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows for that matter, please do tell a friend. Also, don't forget to rate us on any platforms you're listening on. And you can also check us out on YouTube. We're also doing a small listener survey to better understand how you respond to our shows and advertising on the network. We would really appreciate it if you could spare a few minutes to fill it in. It helps us build better shows for you. And finally, we would like to thank our sponsors this week. SBI Life Insurance. Apne liye, apno ke liye. Jupiter, a digital banking app. Cap Gemini, get the future you want. Intel V Pro, built for business. And Intel, future banao wonderful with Intel powered laptops.